Good morning, little bird. I'm so glad that you're all my friends. You bring me joy that never ends. I'm so happy to be a friend. Hello. Hello, friends. Oh, I'm so glad to see you this morning. I hope you guys are having a great morning so far. I am having a great morning so far. So I'm glad to be here. Glad to see you guys. It's going to be a great day. Um, growing ups, I started a little bit differently this morning. I actually got the live stream going a couple of minutes early. So you guys could get notified a couple of minutes early and kind of get settled in. Um, give me some feedback on that. Let me know how that went for you. So I've got four great stories to share with you guys today. I'm sure you're going to love them as much as I do. I'm going to start with... Today, I feel silly. Because today, I'm feeling a little silly. I think this is a great start. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. Today, I feel silly and other moods that make, make my day. It's written by Jamie Lee Curtis and illustrated by Laura Cornell. There's our title page. I always like to show the title page. It gives us some information about what is going on in the book, what's coming up. You can see there's a, a small friend and a little cat. And there's that friend doing some different things. It looks like she's happy, maybe a little grumpy. There's a flip. Ooh, that looks a little wild. I think we're gonna find out a little bit more about this little friend as we go through the book. Today, I feel silly. My mom says it's the heat. I put rouge on the cat and gloves on my feet. I eat noodles for breakfast and pancakes at night. I dress like a star. It was quite a sight. That's a fun, silly mood. Fun, silly things to do. Today, my mood's bad. I feel grumpy and mean. I picked up my room. It still isn't clean. I forgot to feed Franny and water the fern, and the cocoa I'm making is starting to burn. Oh, burnt cocoa, that's disappointing. That would make me grumpy too. Today I'm angry. You'd better stay clear. My face is all pinched and red ear to ear. My friends had a play date. They left me out. My feelings are hurt. I want to shout. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when our feelings are hurt, that can make us angry. That happens to me sometimes. Today, I am joyful. My mood is first rate. My friend sleeping over, she said she can't wait. My freckles are popping. The sun is so bright. I ran in the relay with all of my might. She's having a great day. Today, I'm confused. My life's getting hairy. Sam says he's my boyfriend, but he also likes Mary. My mom told my father he might be a dad. I might get a brother. I'm not sure I'm glad. Well, that is confusing, isn't it? Today, I am quiet. My mom understands. She gave me two ice creams, and then we held hands. We went to the movies, and then had a bite. I cried just a little, and then felt all right. 
Oh, sometimes we need a little cry to feel all right. I know that's true for me. Today, I'm excited. There's so much to do. I'm going to sell cookies and lemonade, too. I'm starting a club to go clean up the park. And I've got a big crush on my teacher named Mark. Oh, that's so silly. Today, I'm cranky, so nothing seems right. I have diarrhea and broke my new kite. Mom dyed her hair orange. My dad shaved his beard. My tooth came in crooked. This family is weird. Oh, that, I, I can relate. Today, I'm lonely. I feel so small. My auntie's away. I wish that she'd call. My mom's working late and my dad has the flu. And although I got stuff, I've got nothing to do. Wow, I think we can all relate to that right now. Today, I am happy. I'm walking on air. I learned how to knit and to French braid my hair. I did my first solo in hip hop and jazz. This day's been so great, I'm full of pizzazz. <sighs> Today, I'm discouraged and frustrated. See, I tried rollerblading and fell on my knee. I really want straight hair, but mine's curly Q. Should I cut it or grow it? Oh, what should I do? Oh, I've been feeling discouraged and frustrated so much lately, friends. It's hard. Today, I'm sad. My mood's heavy and gray. There's a frown on my face. It's been there all day. My best friend and I had a really big fight. She said that I tattled, and I know that she's right. Oh, that's the worst when you know that someone's right and you and you did something wrong or you feel so bad. But today, my mood's great. It's the absolute best. I rode a two-wheeler and passed my math test. I played soccer at recess and we won the game. I sang in the show and my parents both came. Wow! That's amazing. I'd rather feel silly, excited, or glad than cranky or grumpy, and discouraged or sad. But moods are just something that happen each day. Whatever I'm feeling inside is okay. How do you feel today? That's a great talk to have with your grown up. How are you feeling today? And friends, it's something I like to tell my friends all the time is it's really, it's really, really important to feel your feelings. I had a friend tell me that a long time ago. She said, Miss Nikki, it's okay to feel your feelings. And I thought, gosh, that's really good advice. And I want to make sure I always tell my friends, it's, it's not just okay to feel your feelings. It's good to feel your feelings. All right. I've got another fun story to share with you guys. This one is called Library Lion. I love, love, love Library Lion. It's a really good classic story. This one's written by Michelle Knudsen and illustrated by Kevin Hawks. Library Lion's a little bit of a long story, so after this one, we're gonna have to have a dance break. All right, here we are. This is before our title page. We can see a fence and a lion and part of a building. All right, what else do we have? Here's our title page. Library lion. There's a lion on the steps and a live one. And then there's lion statues as well. And that door looks like it would be a lion. That makes sense. 
And there's our author and illustrator and publisher, all of course important parts of the title page. One day, a lion came to the library. He walked right past the circulation desk and up into the stacks. <gasps> I can't, I would, I would probably be scared. <laughs> They don't look scared though, do they? Just surprised. I might just be surprised. I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> Mr. McBee ran down the hall to the head librarian's office. There he is running. Miss Merriweather, he called. No running, said Miss Merriweather without looking up. But there's a lion, said Mr. McBee, in the library. Is he breaking any rules? Asked Miss Merriweather. She was very particular about rule breaking. Well, no, said Mr. McBee. Not really. Then leave him be. I, you know what, I would probably say that too. The lion wandered all around the library. He sniffed the card catalog. He rubbed his head against the new book collection. Then he padded over to the story corner and went to sleep. Not sure what to do. No one was sure what to do. There weren't any rules about lions in the library. Soon it was time for story hour. There weren't any rules about lions at story hour either. The story lady seemed a little nervous, but she read out the first book's title in a good clear voice. The lion looked up and the story lady kept reading. The lion stayed for the next story and the story after that. He waited for another story, but the children began to walk away. Story hour is over, the little girl told him. It's time to go. The lion looked at the children. He looked at the story lady. He looked at the closed books. Then he roared very loud. Roar! Oh, I don't think he's very happy about that, but you can't roar in the library. Miss Merriweather came striding out of her office. Who is making that noise? She demanded. It's the lion, said Mr. McBee. Miss Merriweather marched over to the lion. If you cannot be quiet, you will have to leave, she said in a stern voice. Those are the rules. The lion kept roaring. It sounded sad. The little girl tugged on Miss Merriweather's dress. If he promises to be quiet, can he come back for story hour tomorrow? She asked. The lion stopped roaring and he looked at Miss Merriweather. Miss Merriweather looked back. Then she smiled. Yes, a nice, quiet lion would certainly be allowed to come back for story hour tomorrow. Hooray, said the children. Oh, he looks like he's sorry. The next day, the lion came back. You're early, said Miss Merriweather. Story hour is not until three o'clock. The lion did not budge. Very well, said Miss Merriweather. You might as well make yourself useful. She sent him off to dust the encyclopedias until it was time for story hour. The next day, the lion came early again. This time, Miss Merriweather asked him to lick all the envelopes for the overdue notices. Oh, that would be handy. Miss Sarah would probably love having someone help her lick all those envelopes. <laughs> The lion began doing things without being asked. He dusted the encyclopedias. He licked the envelopes. 
He let small children stand on his back to reach books on the highest shelves. Then he curled up in the story corner to wait for story hour to begin. At first, the people in the library were nervous around the lion, but soon they got used to having him around. In fact, he seemed very well suited for the library floor. His big feet were quite were quiet on the library floor. He made a comfy backrest for the children at story hour, and he never roared in the library anymore. What a helpful lion, people said. They patted his soft head as they walked by. How did we ever get along without him? Mr. McBee scowled when he heard that. They had always gotten along fine before. No lions were needed. Lions, he thought, could not understand rules. They did not belong in the building. One day, after he had dusted all the encyclopedias and licked all the envelopes and helped the small children, the lion padded down the hall to Miss Merriweather's office. There was still some time left before story hour. Hello, lion, said Miss Merriweather. I know something you can do. You can bring a book back into the stacks for me. Let me just get it down from the shelf. Miss Merriweather stepped up onto the step stool. The book was just out of reach. Miss Merriweather stood on her toes. She stretched out her fingers. Almost there, she said. Then Miss Merriweather stretched a little too far. Uh-oh. It looks like Miss Merriweather fell. Ouch, said Miss Merriweather softly. She did not get up. Mr. McBee? Mr. McBee? She called after a minute. But Mr. McBee was at the circulation desk. He could not hear her calling. Lion, said Mr. Miss Merriweather. Please go and get Mr. McBee. The lion ran down the hall. No running, Miss Merriweather called after him. He put his big front paws up on the circulation desk and looked at Mr. McBee. Go away, lion, said Mr. McBee. I'm busy. The lion whined. He pointed his nose down the hall toward Miss Merriweather's office. Mr. McBee ignored him. Finally, the lion did the only thing he could think of. He looked Mr. McBee right in the eye, then he opened his mouth very wide, and he roared the loudest roar he had ever roared in his life. blew the glasses right off, Mr. McBee. Mr. McBee gasped. You're not being quiet, he said to the lion. You're breaking the rules. Mr. McBee walked down the hall as fast as he could. The lion did not follow him. He had broken the rules. He knew what that meant. He hung his head and walked toward the doors. Mr. McBee did not notice. Miss Merriweather, he called as he walked. Miss Merriweather, the lion broke the rules. The lion broke the rules. He burst into Miss Merriweather's office. She was not in her chair. Miss Merriweather, he asked. Sometimes, said Miss Merriweather from the floor behind her desk, there is a good reason to break the rules, even in the library. Now please, go call a doctor. I think I've broken my arm. Mr. McBee ran to call a doctor. 
No running, Miss Merriweather called after him. Miss Merriweather kind of reminds me of Miss Sarah because she always makes sure there's no room. The next day, things were almost back. Things were back to normal. Almost. Miss Merriweather's left arm was in a cast. The doctor had told her not to work too hard. I will have my lion to help me, Miss Merriweather thought. But the lion did not come to the library that morning. At three o'clock, Miss Merriweather walked over to the story time corner. The story lady was just beginning a story for the children. The lion was not there. People in the library kept looking up from their books and computer screens, hoping they would see a familiar fluffy face. But the lion did not come that day. The lion did not come the next day either, or the day after that. Aww. One evening, Mr. McBee stopped by Miss Merriweather's office on his way out. Can I do anything for you before I go, Miss Merriweather? He asked her. No, thank you, said Miss Mary Miss Merriweather. She was looking out the window. Her voice was quiet, even for the library. Mr. McBee frowned as he walked away. He thought there was probably something he could do for Miss Merriweather after all. Mr. McBee left the library, but he did not go home. He walked around the neighborhood. He looked under cars, he looked behind bushes, he looked in backyards and trash cans and tree houses. Finally, he circled all the way back to the library. The lion was sitting outside, looking in through the glass doors. Hello, lion, said Mr. McBee. The lion did not turn around. I thought you might like to know, said Mr. McBee, that there's a new rule at the library. No roaring aloud, unless you have a very good reason. Say, if you're trying to help a friend who's been hurt, for example. The lion's ears twitched. He turned around, but Mr. McBee was already walking away. The next day, Mr. McBee walked down the hall to Miss Merriweather's office. What is it, Mr. McBee? asked Miss Merriweather in her new sad, quiet voice. I thought you might like to know, said Mr. McBee, that there's a lion in the library. Miss Merriweather jumped up from her chair and ran down the hall. Mr. McBee smiled. No running, he called after her. Miss Merriweather didn't listen. Oh, look how happy. Sometimes there was a good reason to break the rules, even in the library. Oh, I love that story. It's one of my favorite stories. Because sometimes the rules get broken for good reasons. And sometimes it's just kind of an accident. And sometimes we're very sorry when that happens. And sometimes we have to get excited in the library because we like to sing songs. And we like to dance dances. And I had so much fun doing Walking Walking last week that I thought we could do that again this week. What do you guys think? Especially after we had such a long library lion story. Do you guys remember how it goes? We walk, we hop, we run, we jump, and we march. Oh, and we tiptoe, we tiptoe. I always have to remember. Okay, are you guys ready? All right, let's see, where'd it go? Where'd my song go? There it is.
Here we go. Walking, 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 walking. Hop, hop, hop. Hop, hop, hop. Running, running, running. Running, running, running. Now we stop. Now we stop. friends are always so patient with me. Thank you so much. For my next story, I was working at the library yesterday putting some books on the shelves and I came across this one. This is an old favorite in my house. When my son Cooper was little, three years old probably, this was his favorite story. And he could read it to me. It's called Brown Bear, Brown Bear. What do you see? If you know this one, you're more than welcome to tell me what you see. Brown Bear, Brown Bear is written by Mil Bill Martin Jr. and illustrated by Eric Carl. Here's our title page. Title, author, illustrator, right here. Title, author, illustrator, and then down here you find the publisher. And in library books, you find our library stamp. Brown Bear, Brown Bear, what do you see? I see a... Red bird! Good job, guys! Red bird looking at me. Red bird, red bird, what do you see? I see a yellow duck looking at me. You guys are really good at this. Yellow duck, yellow duck, what do you see? I see a blue horse looking at me. Blue horse, blue horse, what do you see? I see a green frog. <laughs> yes, very good. Green frog, green frog, what do you see? I see see a purple cat looking at me. Purple cat, purple cat, what do you see? I see a white dog looking at me. You guys really know your colors and your animals. White dog, white dog, what do you see? I see a black sheep looking at me. Black sheep, black sheep, what do you see? I see a goldfish looking at me. Goldfish, goldfish, what do you see? 
I see a teacher looking at me. Teacher, teacher, what do you see? I see children looking at me. Ah, I wish I could see you guys. Children, children, what do you see? Okay, guys, tell me what you see. We see a brown bear, a red bird, a yellow duck, a blue horse, a green frog, a purple cat, a white dog, a black sheep, a goldfish, and a teacher looking at us. That's what we see. Oh, I love that song. That story. I got to thinking about my favorite song. I'm excited to share it with you guys. Do you guys want to sing my favorite song with me? I think you know what it is. I'm in such a wonderful mood today that I thought it would be a great day. Just, well, you know, I have to be honest. Every day is a great day to sing my favorite song. Here we go. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, peekaboo. Peekaboo. If you're happy and you know it, peekaboo. Peekaboo. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, peekaboo. Wiggle your ears. If you're happy and you know it, wiggle those ears. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, wiggle your ears. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray! Hooray! Then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray! Hooray! Oh, you guys, that was so fun. I have such a good time singing that song with you. Thanks for clapping and having a good time with me. All right, I have one more great story to share with you guys. You know, it is spring. It's getting close to summer, but we kind of had a funny spring this year. It kind of came a little bit late. Things are starting to grow now, and we're starting to see lots of new life and new critters and new plants and things coming up outside. This is a really good story called This Tree Counts. This Tree Counts is written by Allison Formento and illustrated by Sarah Snow. There are so many different critters that live in and on trees and they rely on trees. My friend Kendra is really good at teaching people about the outdoors. I've learned very lot from her over the years. This tree counts. Of course our title page. Right there. Allison Formento, Sarah Snow, and our publishers. There's some pictures. It's like a town. Maybe a, a farming town. Kind of looks like there's some farms there. Only one tree stood behind Oak Lane School. It needed friends. There it is. Lonely tree. So, Mr. Tate's class decided to plant more trees. The children got ready to dig. Mr. Tate said, wait! Our big tree has a story to tell. The wind began to blow 
and the giant tree shook its leaves. Trees can't talk, Jake said. Mr. Tate said, trees will speak only if you listen closely. Everyone leaned an ear on the tree, and this was what they heard. One owl sits high on my branches, waiting for the moon. Two spiders cling tight to webs, spinning all day long. Three squirrels skitter across my boughs, playing hide and seek. Four robins sing from a nest, calling out, hello. Five caterpillars inch by, building new cocoons. They'll turn into butterflies soon, Shin said. Shh, said Eli, the tree wants us to listen. Six ants march from leaf to leaf, crawling along my bark. Seven crickets rub strong legs, chirping at the sun. Eight flies buzz all around, searching for some food. There's the crickets. And the flies, can you see them all? Nine ladybugs climb around my trunk, exploring before they fly. Ten earthworms glide over my roots, munching rich, moist soil. I am a home for so many, all living safe and free. See the worms underground? That's fantastic. We love worms. They help us so much. Everyone looks at the giant tree waves its leaves. One fell on Amy's head. What did you hear? Mr. Tate asked. This tree counts, Jake said. What else is great about trees? Mr. Tate asked. They make cool shade, said Natalie. This tree washes the air too, said Mr. Tate. Trees can't wash, Jake said. They do wash, Mr. Tate said. They take in dirty air and send out fresh oxygen to breathe. And everyone took a deep breath. <sighs> this tree is so pretty. Can we name it? Natalie asked. Trees don't have names, Jake said. They do have names, said Mr. Tate. We call this an oak. That's what we are planting today. These oak saplings will grow and make acorns. Squirrels love acorns, Jake said. They gather them in the fall. That's right, Mr. Tate said. And the ones they don't eat, you can plant to grow your own oak trees. Can you think of some other kinds of trees? We have an apple tree in our yard, Shin said. Palm trees go, grow where it's warm, said Eli. What about Christmas trees, Jake asked. Those are fir trees, Mr. Tate said. They stay green all year long. This tree is so big, Natalie said. 
I wish I could live up there. I have a tree house, Eli said. I wrote a poem about it. Tree house, tree house, in the sky. Grow some wings and you can fly. Birds can nest and so can I. Oh, that would be fun. A flying tree house? Neat. I don't have a nest, said Jake. I live in an apartment, but we're building a house and it's all made of wood. My guitar is made from wood too, Shin said. My dad made a wooden picnic table for our yard, said Natalie. My pencil is made of wood, shouted Eli. Wood is all around us, friends. Jake put his arms around the tree. He looked up through the branches. Trees sure can do a lot. Mr. Tate nodded. Now you're ready to dig. Everyone planted. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten trees. Great counting, friends. You guys are good. Here they are. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten baby trees. Have fun with your new friends, Shin told the giant tree. The wind blew and the tree waved again. The new trees waved too. Ah, uh, that was it guys. That was our last story for today. I hope you had a wonderful time. I love sharing these stories with you. I sure do miss all of my friends and I can't wait till we can see each other again. Just a quick reminder, for all of you grown-ups watching, the library will be closed for two weeks starting tomorrow. Um, we won't be able to get to the phone or, um, or do any curbside services during those times because of our new bathroom construction. So I'm really, really excited about that. Um, one of my favorite things that's going in the new bathroom is a changing station for babies and toddlers. And I know you guys are as excited about that as I am. I'm so happy to have that for our families. Uh, it's just going to be amazing. When the library is able to reopen, you guys are just going to love all the changes that have been made. I'm so excited. So, two weeks starting tomorrow will be closed. If you need to pick up books, you can give us a call today. We'll be there until 4 o'clock. And we'll still be doing curbside today until 4 o'clock. Um, and then starting tomorrow, we will be unavailable for the next two weeks and we will resume all services uh, June 11th and we're hoping if everything goes according to plan that we will be able to reopen the library around June 15th. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed and always a big huge shout out to all the city workers who have been helping and, and putting an extra time out there with some of the extra work we weren't anticipating and of course our public works director Lyle Thomas always overseeing everything and and making sure we get what we need so thanks to all of those people for helping us it takes a community to make our library the best it can be and I hope you guys can join me tomorrow night for bedtime stories right here Thursday at seven o'clock have a great day